Hello, and welcome to the episode 4 of my devlog series on making an indie factory game. In the last episode, we talked about gathering items from the world and putting them in the user's inventory. In this episode, I'll talk about how I designed and implemented the UI for the inventory, so that the user can see and interact with those items that they gathered. I needed to find a style, a color palette, and an interaction method. I landed on something I am overall quite happy with, but I would truly appreciate feedback on this one. As per usual now, we're also going to talk about how I made the inventories work in multiplayer. When I started working on this game, I made a few experiments for UI designs. And after a few mockups I was really unhappy about, I landed on this one, which I thought looked promising. I refined it to this, which ended up being the UI design I used for the initial proof of concept that I describe in episode 1 of this series. In the past few weeks though, I completely redesigned it. I went for a neomorphism style. If you didn't know, this is what neomorphism looks like. It has those soft edges that also give a fake 3D feel. But the most important for me is that it's a style that I think looks really peaceful and calm. I also went for a Windows-based UI, where each inventory has its own little window rather than the UI taking up the whole screen like in my proof of concept. Games like Dyson Sphere Program uses a similar Windows-based UI, while Minecraft's UI take up the whole screen. I think Windows works better for my game, as it allows easier transfer between different machines and containers. I also started thinking about the crafting mechanic, and experimented with what tooltips could look like. I'm not fully happy with either of those, so I will do some more work on them. But the inventory, I'm happy with it. I designed a few other elements, such as progress bars, toggles, buttons, just to build my prefab palette and ensure consistency over time. I export everything at 3x scale from what I designed. And in Unity, I set the pixels per unit to 300. I set my UI to scale from 1080p reference, matching my Figma frames. This allows me to keep a one-to-one -one parity between Figma and Unity, where 10 pixels in Figma is 10 units in Unity. And font sizes also perfectly match in the two. Exporting at 3x scale, ensures that the UI remains rather crisp even with a 2K or 4K monitor. For the font, after a bit of research, I landed on this beautiful one called Monomials. I think it works perfectly for my game. It has a lovely balance between modern and old school. I also like that it's a mono font, which will make my life a lot easier when designing UI, as the size of the text is predictable based on the number of characters. Overall, I'm quite proud, as it feels like a proper production-ready UI, but I would love some feedback. Please let me know if you like it, or if you have any ideas to improve it. Alright, now time to do the implementation. It didn't take me long to find a use for the wooden crate I made in the last episode. I'll make that the first chest, or container, in my game. So, for this implementation, I need to think of what I want the multiplayer UX to look like. The challenge is to define what happens when two players want to interact with the content of a chest at the same time. Valheim, for instance, decided to lock any container to the person interacting with it, and no one else can open it. This way, there's no risk of conflict. This implementation is by far the simplest. However, it couldn't work for my game because automation is at the core of it, and I can't stop the server inserting items from things such as conveyor belts because someone is viewing the content of the container. So I need a more complex server authoritative system, such as the one in Minecraft. My solution for this issue is composed of three major scripts. 
first an inventory class whose content is synced over the network. To do this in Unity NGO, I inherited from network variable base. In the method write delta, I send all the stacks that changed since the last update. This is the server side. And on the client side, the read delta method will apply the changes received from the server to the local copy. Stacks are serialized and deserialized using those extension methods. They sync the item ID and the stack size. This networked inventory ensures that all clients are up to date with the server and ensures only the server can actually edit the content of an inventory. The second component will be responsible for requesting the server to edit an inventory from a client that doesn't have authority. It will let the server know that they want to insert or pick up items to and from inventories. This offers an opportunity for the server to make sure this request makes sense, for instance validating that no one picked up the item before that client. When moving an item from an inventory to another, the user picks up the stack and places it down somewhere else. To ensure this item is also server authoritative, I made a special invisible networked inventory with just one slot where the item is stored while in transition. This is the third key component of my solution. This server authoritative pattern is the only real way to avoid things such as item duplication due to lag. Right, inventory UI and implementation are now done. Thank you so much for watching this episode. In the next one, we will talk about placing blocks from the inventory. If you'd like to give me feedback or ideas, you are very welcome to join the Discord server. You can find the link in the description. Hoping to see you again in the next episode.